Passing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go On the Range with Jay Delsing. On the Range is brought to you by Pro-Am Golf. Good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I am your host, Jay Delsing Pearly. John Perlis is with me today. Good morning, Pearly. Good morning, Jay. Glad to be here. And uh, another superstar celeb for the interview. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, uh, we formatted the uh, show like a round of golf. The The first segment is called the On the Range segment. It's brought to you by Pro-Am Golf. And I uh, got to tell you about our social media outlets. Uh, Twitter is um, at Jay Delsing. Facebook is Golf with Jay Delsing and Jay Delsing Golf. LinkedIn is Jay Delsing, and our Instagram is uh, nowhere to be found. Now, what do you do uh, specifically and technically to interact with your social media from show to show? Uh, I call Drew. Yeah. (laughs) And I have Drew tell me what we do. Um, Yeah, um, Drew Thompson at BYK Digital runs that stuff for us. And, you know. But actually, good things are happening, right? There is a very good thing. Downloads that you and I are like blowing away. Yes. Right. What's, what's your mile marker? What's we, happening? Right now? Uh, several weeks ago, we passed 50,000 downloads. That's and uh, amazing. Yeah, we appreciate y'all listening. I don't know. Maybe it's not amazing. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. It's maybe amazing we're to good? Me. It's no. amazing to me. All right. Um, so this show, Hall of Famer Ozzy Smith yeah. interview. This guy loves golf. He does so much for the game, so that's going to be fun. And then we got some other topics that we want to talk about. One of the things, I keep getting emails, and so... Um, John, I want to get your opinion on this. You know I'll give you my opinion. Let her rip. I know, even, <laughs> even, though, I didn't, even though I didn't have to ask. You know, the funny thing is, um, everyone, that, uh, everyone, but several people have said, talk about, you know, the golf broadcasting. Talk about who you like, who you don't like. Talk about some of the changes. And so, Okay, so let's dive into that, right? Um, first of all, it's basically a two-horse race between NBC and CBS. However, you know, the Golf Channel just has so much content on. They do early round stuff. And, 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 so, and they, they're doing a better and better job oh my all gosh. the time. Do you remember when we started? Oh, God. They were the worst. We'd be out in the fairway and they'd be running behind us while we were swinging. And I remember. I would think be so pissed at them. I, I'd like to see if it's a fact with ESPN, but I think the first time they ever televised golf was when we played at Pasa Tiempo. In college. Oh, you're right. Uh, me, that had you, to be. I remember J. Don Blake was playing real well in the Steve tournament. Pate was playing. And I think they had like, I think it was only like one hole they're, they're televising. I think they did the 18th at par three. The and, Posse Tiempo was in Santa Cruz, California. It's an old Alistair McKenzie golf course. But that's how old we are. Yeah. We are. I think we were on the, so first, telecast, up again. the first telecast ever. Oh and as bad gosh. as we were, I was pumped and we were all excited that they were there. But... It was a little sketchy. And this is the Fossil Network, <laughs> yeah. brought to you by John and Jay. Um, no, so anyway, let's let's start with CBS. Okay, so huge change turnover there. Gary McCord, Peter Costas, out. So how how about that exit? How do you think that went? Well, I think CBS did not handle it necessarily very well, uh, especially the way McCord and Costas presented it. CBS executives have had no comment. Costas and McCord are still pissed off about it, and they're still, you know, ranting about it on social media and doing things. You know, they 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 can't believe they were let go the way they were let go. I think they're, I think they're just bummed because they got let go unceremoniously is no uh, an understatement, that. I suppose. Yeah, I don't think it was handled well. Honestly. Yeah, you know, it's too bad because you know they did kind of some special stuff with Johnny, and not that these guys were Johnny's stature, if you will, but. They were they were big in the game for a long time. Gary McCord brought some real, if you will, interesting color to the game, and yeah, he was he one of the first guys to really break through that and have that player's perspective because yep. he played the tour many years and yep. was an excellent player. And then to come out and kind of do the handlebar mustache and and all the the crazy uh, yep. descriptions and things that he would say and uh, and having fun with the guys. So he had a major impact. So the fact that it went. I wonder what else was going on that they couldn't have found a better way to make that happen. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the behind the scenes of the, the executive stuff like that. But what they did do is they brought in Davis Love, one of my favorites, great guy, and and he, you know, and and then they also brought in Trevor Immelman, 
who's you know I I know him. I just I, I just am over the accents. Maybe it's because I don't have one or, well, the, or Missouri the, accent, but I mean. The, the, the stations aren't uh, over the accents. No. They love them. Every station's got to have one or two accents out there from South Africa, Australia, one of those. For some reason, they just feel compelled well, to do that. Exactly what happened with us at Fox. We're doing the Fox thing, and the next thing you know, Ken Brown comes over. And Ken Brown, he's a great mm-hmm. guy and a good friend. His wife, Dawn, there all the time. They're, he's a terrific guy, but, um, you know, we had to have that accent in on the uh, on the broadcast. So, those guys are out. Jim Nance, I'm going to tell you this, my opinion. Nick Faldo, nah. I, have, I, I I didn't enjoy him much when I was playing with him. But I just don't I, I just don't feel like he's necessarily that either into it or that prepared. Okay? That's just my opinion on it. But Jim Nance. Spectacular. It's he like carries smoothing it. the road. He's carrying the water yeah. for the entire station. So I, 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 I have so much time for Jim Nance. Now, how about the NBC team, Pearl? So Johnny Miller gone. Paul Azinger, who's going to be on next week, our interview next week, folks. What's that called in radio, Pearl? Tease. Look at you. It's called the tease, yeah, baby. No. So we got Paul Azinger on Wonderful interview and, yep. and, a, and a fun guy. Yep. I got to actually the, some of the first mini tour events I played down in Florida. Got my kick, uh, teeth kicked in by the Florida boys. He was certainly one of them. Not that he even noticed that he was kicking my teeth in, but he was without even paying attention. Right. And uh, I remember what a good guy he was, what a competitor he was. And uh, so it was kind of neat to see him kind of come up through the ranks. And he is a... He tells it. He tells it like he sees it. He does. Type of guy. He does. He sure does. And uh, he's got this. Uh, he's got this vibe or this mannerism about him where you almost feel like he's he's sitting in a rocking chair, you know, with a cold one, sitting on a porch somewhere, just telling an old story, yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, I like the way he handles it. He obviously knows the game. He's he's been there. He's been in the battles. Yeah. So he he comes with a great perspective. And, and so Dan Hicks, the whole dynamic in the booth changed so much. So what folks are dealing with here, Pearl, in my opinion, is you know how uncomfortable change is. So now McCord and Costas gone. In comes Davis Love. Davis is a little timid, but a good guy. He'll pick it up. Immelman's got an entirely different take on everything, which is hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you switch over to NBC and Johnny Miller, who was opinionated on a car that you drove in, on the shoes that you wore. He had an he had not only an opinion, he had the right opinion on everything. And you have Dan Hicks and and that that dynamics changed with with Zinger in there, I feel like. Yeah, I think everybody's got to get used to it. We do as the viewers. Those guys have to kind of mesh and kind of see how they they do their shtick together. I think they'll be good. I think, yeah, it's, it's been interesting because all of a sudden Dan Hicks is kind of taking on a different role. And personally, I thought he was better than the other one. Well, no, I was going to say, there are moments where I'm like, ah, yeah. Dan's in a, this almost like uncharted water yeah, for him, you right. know, because I he's more to me like a re, a, a, a really good ringmaster where he's juggling the act, but he's not the act. And every once in a while, there's these moments where he kind of goes in and I'm like, oh, gosh, he really doesn't know a whole hell of a lot about what he's talking about right now compared to Johnny. Or well, we were talking Zinger. about that when uh, Jimmy Roberts kind of hops into the uh, yeah, to the system as well. And me. that's a real tough one for me. I'll tell you that what, though. When, I, it's it's got to be every sport. When somebody that hasn't played the sport before jumps into some of these situations that need the perspective of somebody whose heart was beating on that line once upon a time, it's just really tough when they cross that line or, or, or they're in that situation and they can't quite draw on what they need to draw on. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And I think that shows, I think that's what us, some of the folks and some of the emails that I've been getting are, are saying. They're like, we're not really sure, you know, what's happening here, yeah. you know, where, but, but it's, it's not a plug and play sort of thing, no. right? There has to be some chemistry and that has to take some time. I think that's. I think you've hit on it right there. And again, back to Jimmy Roberts. I think when he does his little side stories and stuff like that, I think they're fun. They're fantastic. It's so interesting the way he pulls things together. But the off the cuff stuff, you can, to me, right off you know off the bat, you can tell he's not a player. And yeah, he needs to. He needs to have his stuff prepared. And those kind of uh, heartwarming stories or those kind of personal touches, I think, are are neat and real special. Yeah. 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 Um, well. 
Shoot, that's Of course, gonna... that's our opinion on all that stuff. Well, that's why we have a show, so we can, <laughs> we can voice our opinion. Uh, that's going to do it for the um, On the Range segment. I've got to tell you about, uh, I want to th- uh, thank Donahue Painting and Refinishing for supporting the show. When I was playing, I would paint this picture of a shot in my mind and then try to go do that. Well, you've got a, a picture and an image of what you want your house to look like. These guys can do it for you at the highest quality. Um, well, so don't go anywhere. We're going to come back with the Ozzy Smith interview on the front nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association is a proud sponsor of Golf with Jay Delsing. The MAGA has been the USGA Allied Golf Association in the St. Louis Central and Southern Illinois region since 1992. The MAGA provides over 30 days of competition opportunities and conducts qualifying for nine USGA championships while supporting more than 140 member clubs with amateur golf services. Find all of their information at metga.org or call 314-567-MAGA. I want to tell you about a strength training fitness program that helped me and that can help you. It's called 20 Minutes to Fitness. They have two locations, one in Clayton and one in Chesterfield. Every time you go to the gym with 20 Minutes to Fitness, you work with a professional trainer. They take you through specific machines and with specific exercises that are designed to help your golf game. We're talking about strength, flexibility, and those two components are huge to help you improve your game. Visit 20 minutes to Your first session is absolutely free. Get off the couch and get in shape. This is Dan McLaughlin, TV voice of the Cardinals. St. Louis is one of the best sports cities in the country. We also have a tremendous history of supporting professional golf. We're excited to bring professional golf back to St. Louis with the inaugural Ascension Charity Classic, September 28th through October 4th at beautiful Norwood Hills Country Club. Legends like Ernie Els, Fred Couples, Jim Furyk, Steve Stricker, and many more will be in St. Louis. For tickets and sponsorship information, head to ascensioncharityclassic.com. That's Ascension Charity classic.com i want to take a minute to tell you about a law firm that has been with me since the inception of the show i'm talking about doster olam and boyle the firm was started in 2015 by mike doster jess olam and john boyle these are three veterans of the st louis real estate banking commercial and corporate legal landscape the firm has talented additional roster of professionals with decades of experience to help you achieve your goals in whatever situation you find yourself in the firm was founded on the shared goals that success has to be measured by client and community satisfaction not just profits for the partners these guys are involved in the community they live in the community and they care about the community since its founding in 2015 dr Olman Boyle have been involved in real estate, business, and corporate transactions with over a billion dollars in combined value. Their areas of practice will overlap, and the firm's attorneys will take their time to get to know you and your situation so that they can guide you and point you in the direction that you need to go. Dr. Ullman Boyle, extraordinary talent, ordinary people. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. How is the relationship with your bank? Does it meet your expectations for what a bank should be? Are they a partner for you and your business, providing value beyond the products and services offered? Or is it just a holding place for your money? At St. Louis Bank, we want to be your banking partner. We believe in being more for you and your business than a placeholder for your money. Our team works to understand you so we can provide the ideal products and services for you and your business. And we're always just a call, text, or email away to provide the banking advice that you need. Because at St. Louis Bank, we know when you succeed, we all succeed. Isn't it time you get the banking partner you deserve? St. Louis Bank, let's move your business forward together. Find us online at stlouisbank.com, connect with us on LinkedIn, or call at 314-851-6200. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The front nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Golf Classic. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Jay and Jan are here, and we are going to the front nine, which is brought to you by the ACC Charity Classic. That's the Ascension Charity Classic. It's going to be played at Norwood Hills this September, October. But uh, first, let's talk about Whitmore. They've been a great supporter of mine in this show. Um, if you join at Whitmore, you get access to 90 holes of golf over there. You got the 36 holes at Whitmore and three other golf courses, Missouri Bluffs, Links of Dardeen, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. No cart fees. No cart fees involved over there. 
There's no food or beverage minimums. There's a 24-hour fitness center, a large pool complex, tennis courts. But stop in the golf shop and go see Bummer. He is a great guy. Take your kids in there. He's going to shake your hands. He's going to he's going to make you laugh. He's going to tell you anything and everything you need to know about golf. This guy loves to grow the game. He'd love to help you. He and the staff are in there. They're running golf leagues and skins games, members, tournaments, couples events all year round. There's also a kids club over there. Bro, these things have gotten extremely popular. In the evening time, you can drop your children off. They can hang out with other kids. They can go swim. You can go have a cocktail with your girlfriend or your wife. Go play nine holes. Whatever you want. It's 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 really great. You got to go talk to Bill Brungart. He's a membership director, and you can reach him at six three six nine two six nine six two two. All right. Hall of Famer Ozzie Smith, thirteen Gold Gloves. Absolute gold standard for defensive shortstops in MLB. We got him on the show. Fantastic. Fantastic. You're bringing one superstar after another, but certainly locally, this guy's about as big as they get. All right, let's go hear what the Wizard of Oz has to say. Ozzy, you have got to be, you are going to go down as one of the most popular Cardinals of all time, and that's a big deal in this city, man. Th- thanks for joining me today. <laughs> Oh, all right, Jay, thanks for having me. And, you know, um, this being a baseball town, but I, I think more importantly, I think people are starting to realize that it's just not a baseball town. Certainly it, 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 is, it is number one here. I guess hockey, you could say hockey is, is uh, right there with it now because of the, the uh, Blues winning the Stanley Cup. But, you know, base, this has always been a baseball town, and uh, I, I think now people are starting to see it as much more than just, uh, just a baseball and hockey town. It certainly is a great sporting town. And, you know, um, in 18 after having the championship here, I think people, um, people have a real appreciation for how much we love our sports around here. Yeah, that is for sure. So, as you grew up out in L.A. and were drafted out of high school – and then got traded from San Diego to, to St. Louis early in your career. Did you ever dream of, a, you know, you're a kid that grew up on the West Coast. I went to college out there. Did you ever dream that you'd wind up, you know, uh, living most of your life here in the Midwest? It has to be. God, there's no way. <laughs> no, I didn't, Jay. And I tell you, you know, for a lot of people, a lot of people think that, um, as you just mentioned, that I got drafted out of high school. I, I never got drafted out of high school, which was a little discouraging for me because uh, in high school I played with Eddie Murray. And so when scouts came to see our team play, it wasn't to see a 145, 150-pound shortstop. So he dominated all of the, the, um, um, all of the scouts that came out to check us out. And so I had to take a different route to the – to the big league. And my route was uh, going to a little small school in central California called Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo, where uh, I played there four years. And then um, after my season in 1970, um, 1976, I went to a little small town called Clarinda, Iowa, where I just returned from yesterday, where I ra- helped them raise money to keep their program going, where they have, um, they have uh, parents, um, they call town parents, where guys stay in the homes of people there that open their homes up to them. You work during the day and you play baseball at night. And so <clears throat> I, um, I, I, went, I went there as a kid. And, and in 1970, uh, 76, I get drafted by the Detroit Tigers. Uh, the Detroit Tigers offered me $8,500, Jay, and uh, I finished three years of my schooling, you know, so I said to myself that if they give me ten grand, i will you know, it'll be worth the shot. Otherwise, you know, I promised my mom I was going to get my education. I'd go back to school in hopes of getting drafted again my senior year. Well, I went back and asked for 1500 They say they didn't have it in the budget. So um, I returned for my senior year. And being the good businessman that I am, Jay, I signed for five thousand dollars on a bus ticket to Walla Walla, Washington, where I started my professional career. Uh, so, uh, so I, for all the young people out there, I wasn't one of those bonus babies that signed for a lot of money. Um, but uh, I held on to my dream. I held on to the dream that at some day I would make myself a a big league ball player. And just just to get the opportunity and be the best big league ball player that I could be, and and lo and behold, I 
I, I get signed by the Padres, and uh, in my I, I was there for my first four years, and then uh, Gary Templeton had some problems here in St. Louis, and I certainly had some problems there in, in San Diego. So we ended up getting traded for each other, and you know Gary was probably one of the most talented guys to ever put on a pair of spikes. You know he um, he was a true five-two player who could hit for power, could hit for average. Um, he could run, he could throw, he did it all. And he's still the only guy in the National League to get 200 hits from each side, 100 hits from each side of the plate. So that was a lot of pressure coming to an organization such as the Cardinals, you know, having to try and reprove myself over again. But here again, I believed in what I could do. I think Whitey Herzog and acquiring me believed in what I could do and felt that I could. Uh, I would be the the missing link, or I was the missing link to what this organization needed. And lo and behold, 1982 was a magical year for us, and I've been here ever since. Uh, the thing that is that st- stuck out in my mind when I watched you play for I had never seen anybody bring the sort of athleticism that you brought to the shortstop position. Your range was sick. I mean, it was crazy. And the, the, the way that you were able to dive, get back up on your feet and all that stuff, it was it, it, it just never been seen before. I mean, a 13-time gold glover, a 15-time all-star. I mean, you even won the Silver Slugger Award in 1987. That, man, that, for, from, from what you just talked about in the high school, you know, and, and then Iowa and that whole thing is, I mean, did you ever, you had to dream, though. You had to think you could do it. No, you know, Jay, you know, it was just about being the best at whatever I chose to do. My, and my mom used to preach this, and I was lucky enough that I had, the, I had the people that were important in my life, they were all preaching the same message about working hard to be the best whatever it was that I chose to do in my life. It just so happened that I realized at an early age that my hand and eye coordination would be my ticket. It was something that was very special. It was a blessing. And I never wanted that to be um, uh, something that I took for granted, you know. So I just continued to work hard at being the best baseball player that I could be. And I would let all of those other things take care of themselves as, as it did. You know, my job every day was to go out there and catch and throw the baseball, um, make as few mistakes as I possibly could, knowing that there was no such thing as perfection, which – will lead us into what golf is all about when we start talking about that. But right. that, that, that's a correlation there uh, that I find in the two sports. But it was to be the very best that I could be with what I was given. You know, uh, I wasn't blessed with a lot of power. My defensive prowess allowed me to remain at the big league level to learn the art of hitting. And that didn't really start for me until I came over to the Cardinals in the winter of 1981. Um, where Whitey Herzog gave me a guy by the name of Chuck Hiller and Dave Ricketts. And all those guys uh, helped me understand what it was that I was trying to accomplish as an offensive player. And one of the main things was learning to keep the ball out of the air and utilizing my, my, my speed, um, you know, taking advantage of my speed. And uh, once I had an, uh, an understanding of what it was that I was going to try, that I was trying to accomplish, then, I'm not going to say that it was easy because, you know, no success comes without some blood, some sweat, and some tears. And I think for any kid or any person that's going to get the most out of what they do, Jay, you you gotta you gotta love the process. And the process means working. Um, and in in golf, for me, it means digging it digging it out of the dirt. Uh, for baseball, it meant taking countless number of ground balls every day. And it's that same approach that. I had in baseball that I use now in in my approach to golf. You know, the only way I'm going to figure it out is to to hit enough balls to where there's a true understanding of how to fix it when it goes bad. Because it it surely will go bad. (laughs) But the important thing is learning how to fix it and fix it quickly enough to get yourself back on track. Yeah, you know, as one of the things, you know, my dad – played big league ball and and one of the things I remember him teaching me when I watched you play he said son if this man drives in 50 RBI but prevents 70 runs being scored 
that's like a 120 RBI guy. And he gave me an entirely <laughs> different look at the at, at, at watching you play. And one of the things I was, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but one of the things that really caught my eye is what a good, the great hitter you made yourself. Because I think when you first came up, I mean, first of all, you were a switch hitter. And like you said, learning mm-hmm. to play at, the, you know, Bush 2 with the, with the turf mm-hmm. and get the ball on the ground. But you made yourself into a good hitter, Twenty, oh, nearly 2,500 hits in a career, Ozzy. That's impressive. Yeah. I, I tell you, Jay, and here again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about digging it out of dirt and figuring it out. I can remember um, having a, getting a batting cage put in, in, in my basement and spending countless hours. Uh, to the point I had calluses in my hand at, at learning the art of hitting, learning how to pull the ball and getting myself from, from, from being a number eight hitter in the lineup to being able to hit at the top of the lineup. Uh, you know, that, 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 that meant a lot to me, you know, and, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be as good a player as I could be so that when I walked away from the game, I didn't feel that I cheated myself or I cheated anybody that paid their money to come see me play. And so um, it was, it, it was the blood, the sweat and the tears that went into it that, that, that allowed me to experience the success and stuff that I've had um, uh, that I had in a 19 year career. And, and it's part of, of, of the way that I approach golf now, you know, when I grew up, I never played golf and, um, uh, in high school or anything. I didn't pick up a golf club until I retired in 1996. So I just took the, the work ethic and everything that I understood about the game of baseball and tried to apply it to the, to the game of golf. And, 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 you know, with golf, it's, it's an imperfect game, but it presents you a real challenge that, you know, you challenge yourself, you challenge the course. And of course you challenge the people that, you play against, and and I always wanted to. I I always always want to be in a position where I'm, I'm I you know I I can compete. You know that doesn't mean that I'm going to win all the time, but I want to be able to compete if I get in the in the competition. And and that there's there is certainly a a great deal of pressure when you stand up over the ball on the first tee and you got to you, you got people standing there expecting that because you're a professional athlete that this is easy and it's going to work. I'm going to tell you, it's one of the most nerve-wracking things <laughs> that, that I've ever done, but um, I'm getting better at it. All right, so that's going to do it for the front nine. Uh, come back, we're going to wrap up that Ozzie Smith interview. We're going to, Pearlie and I are going to have a few comments about it on the back nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The 100,000 watt blowtorch for St. Louis sports, driven by Auto Centers Nissan, home of the 30 day return. WXOX and WXOS HD1, East St. Louis, 101 ESPN. Are you in the market for some new clubs? Maybe a bag and the latest style of sweet new shoes. Is this a year you decide to stop listening to your buddy's advice and get some real golf instruction? If any of these appeal to you, then go to Pro-Am Golf today. Pro-Am Golf has all the latest gear from all the major manufacturers. Call Steve today at 314-781-7775 and schedule a lesson with Tom DeGrand. Tom is the best. He's been in the game for over 50 years, so you take that knowledge along with their state-of-the-art equipment and boom! Boom, your game will get a whole lot better. Visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. The Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association is a proud sponsor of Golf with Jay Telsing. The MAGA has been the USGA Allied Golf Association in the St. Louis Central and Southern Illinois region since 1992. The MAGA provides over 30 days of competition opportunities and conducts qualifying for nine USGA championships while supporting more than 140 member clubs with amateur golf services. Find all of their information at metga.org or call 314. 314- 567 MAGA. I'd like to thank Whitmore Country Club for sponsoring my show Golf with Jay Delsing on 101 ESPN. Whitmore has been a great partner as I enter my second year. If you are considering a great place for your family to hang out, you've got to go over to Whitmore Country Club. Go in the golf shop, see my friend Bummer. He'll tell you all you need to know about the kids' club, the golf, the tennis. Uh, They've got uh, swim teams and leagues. There's anything you and your family could want at Whitmore Country Club. Visit them at whitmoregolf.com.
USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs. If you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. USA Mortgage has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Back Nine is brought to you by St. Louis Bank. Welcome back to Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got my buddy Pearly here, and we are headed to the Back Nine, brought to you by St. Louis Bank. All right, John, we just got to jump right back into this Ozzie Smith interview, and uh, let's listen to The Wizard. Well, so let's talk a little bit about that because one of the things I love about the show is I want to talk. No, how many people have played, you know, shortstop on big league level and to your level, especially zero, very few. But let's talk about some of the mental challenges, the similarities, the differences, because I can promise that if there were two outs in the, in, uh, in the ninth inning, there was one guy on that infield that wanted the ball hit to him, and that was you. And when that's a yeah. state of mind. And when you play golf, and it's not your number one, let's say, the thing that you're most proficient at. You know, you're a ball player. But now all of a sudden, right. Oz, you've got to stand over, you know, those four-foot putts. You've got to figure out a, a way to get that ball in the hole. And it's not easy, is it? No, it's not. I mean, it's the same – it, it, it really is the same. Uh, it's the same approach. You know, you have to get yourself in the mental state of mind that, uh, or, or being the level of confidence that, that you can do this. Baseball was a lot, you know, it was a lot more, a lot easier for me because it's what I did when I was young and I was growing up. And as you know, it's it's tougher to learn the, the game of golf the older you are. And I think one of the things that makes it real tough is in baseball. Uh, Jay, we we don't we can't move until the pitcher moves. You know which kind of you you, you got to find your rhythm. You find your rhythm there in golf. Everything is is stationary. You have to create that momentum. You have to create the the rhythm and all of that on your own. And and that was one of the toughest things for me uh, was just starting from a stagnated position. I have never in in any of the athletics that I played. Uh, any of the sports, uh, you know, I, I'm all, you're always moving. And so when you get to golf and you're standing over it, it's like standing at the plate and the pitcher's holding on to the ball because there's a guy on first base. When there's, when, when, when you have, when it's, when it's stagnated like that, it makes you more nervous and, and you're, and you get tighter. So, you, you you have to figure out a way to make that happen. And for me, um, it's a little unorthodox, but I probably, you know, I probably uh, move a lot more, you know, my feet. I've always believed that your feet are what puts you in a position to be able to uh, do what it is you do athletically. And so I find that to be the same way with golf. You know, it's my feet that put me in a position to be able to, to square the club up and square it up on a consistent basis. Well, as it's important because your feet are the only thing that has any sort of contact with the ground. I try to tell people you're not only gaining, and I know you, I've seen you swing the golf club. I know you know how to, you know, transfer and use the ground to help you transfer energy, but there's so much feeling and so much interpretation of what's going on through your feet. Yeah, that's, that's right. And, and so when I first started playing, See, I was like everybody else. Well, I'm gonna start here still, and I'm gonna let it let it go. And and, it, and it's not for me. It didn't present enough. Or I didn't have enough moving to really kind of get in the flow of it. And it wasn't until I I said I, that I had to free myself up, as I did when I played baseball, 
that things started, and I started to have understanding of what it was I was trying to accomplish and how I could get the club um, back to square. Because ultimately, what it boils down to is being able to square that club up at club and ball contact. Now, just like in baseball, we all start in different positions, but what we're trying to do is get square at, at contact. It's a, that's that's the same thing with golf. Down at the bottom, you want to be square at contact and do that do that as consistently as you possibly can, knowing that it's it's impossible to, to do it all the time, but that's the goal. No, there's no doubt, Oz. Did you ever dream? I mean, hitting a baseball has been written, I don't know how many times, that the hardest thing in sport to do. Did you ever dream that a ball standing still could be so hard to hit squarely? Well, how hard can this be, Jay? It can't be that hard, can it? <laughs> but it has turned out to be one of the most uh, most challenging things that I've ever done in my life, you know, being able to find that consistency. And I've finally gotten myself to a point to where when I go out there, I have enough confidence to say that, you know, um, I, I am going to shoot in the 70s. Um, my goal now is to, uh, each year from this point forward is to uh, shoot around in the 60s, well, one or maybe two rounds a year in, in the 60s. And, you know, that if I do that, then it means that I'm playing pretty consistent golf and I'm not shooting over 80 um, a, a whole lot, you know. So uh, that's that's my challenge these days. I, I love it. Uh, so tell me, how, how did you get into the game? I know that, and at least for a lot of the other athletes that I've come on, they, they love – the fact that golf has kind of filled that uh, competitive Jones, you know, for us all. But yeah. how did you who, who yeah, introduce you to the game? There's and I know you love you know, it. When you know, when you get out of it, Jay, uh, there certainly is a competitive void. And golf fills that void because you know that it's a sport that you're never going to perfect. It's all about getting yourself to a point of consistency that will allow you to go out and, and compete against the guys all the time. And I, I was no different as far as I was concerned. So knowing that um, I'm never going to perfect it, but uh, making it making my game a respectable game when I go out and play, uh, you know, is something that I felt I owed to myself. Well, and, and so let's talk a little bit about the cool things that you've done uh, with PGA Reach, you know, I started the first tee a while back, and I'm not involved with those guys anymore. But let's talk about the PGA Reach and 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 what you created there. And then the PGA Championship was just a, I mean, if there's such a thing as a five run home run, us that the PGA Championship <laughs> just killed it for the city. That yeah, that was, and and um, like all of us, Jay, I think you've been a part of it with the first tee of trying to get kids exposed to the game early on and and what we what we were doing is pretty much the same thing exposing kids because as a kid growing up in south central los angeles i was never exposed to the game so uh i wanted to expose kids as early as i possibly could while at the same time teaching them the um, skills of life responsibility all of those things that the game of golf present you know um uh, being able to compete and, and compete in an honest and and and, uh, and respectful way. So with PGA Reach, we, we we've now expanded that to uh, veterans and, and and giving everybody who otherwise would not have an opportunity to not only enjoy the game of golf but the bit the business of golf as well. You know, so I, I've always. So it, it was important for if a kid finds that thing that he loves doing and he does it at an early age, he'll never work a day in his life. So um, through that is, is, is how PGA Reach came about and my interest in PGA Reach and, and especially for kids here in, in, uh, in St. Louis in the inner city who have never been exposed to the game of golf all all the, the kids know it's basketball and football and um, and stuff. So uh, putting a club in their hand early on could really open the door for a lot of young kids. So uh, that's the purpose of it. And, and hopefully one day I'll be able to sit here and say that we um, we built a, a facility in the inner city that hopefully allows kids the opportunity to go over and 
learn not only the game of golf, but the business of golf as well. Right on, Oz. I mean, I want to support that that vision as well. I, I can't impress upon you from a, so I grew up in North County and I grew up as a caddy, um, but there weren't any African-American people playing golf when I was a kid. The fact that you are no. who you are and you've done what you've done in a baseball town and, and now it's a full-blown sports town with the blues and everything else and having your image associated with golf and then these kids can see, oh, wait a minute, man, Ozzy Smith's playing golf. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I can play yeah. golf. That's a that's big really, deal. Yeah, that's really what it's about. It's just giving those kids, you know, something that they can uh, – and something that they can they, they can actually see and, and know that they can be a part of it if they apply themselves the right way. Education is probably the most important thing that we stress, but it's it, 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 it's it's something that I think that through education and exposure, these kids will hopefully be able to make something of themselves. You know, you know something, Oz, one of the things that I'm so grateful for about my career is that I still got to play, the tail end of my career, I still got to play and, and play golf with Tiger Woods and be a part of it in a very, very small way. And I've talked to him and I've read about him. I've sent him notes every year thanking him for raising everybody's water level and we're all making more money and things like that. But he'll say that one of the most significant things – you know, that, that he brought to the table, he considers himself a multiracial guy. And us, all of these doors that w- were closed before opened up in the game, and it's unbelievable. Yeah, he, um, you know, he certainly was a spearhead of that. And here again, it was one of those things that now Pete, young kids, young African-American kids, all kids, um, can see that, you know, if you, if you work hard, you put forth the effort, Great things can happen. And the most important thing is being able to give back. And I think, you know, we, we talk about the greatness of Tiger Woods and his ability to hit the golf ball and do this and do that and all the records and stuff. But one of the most important parts of his legacy is what he's been able to give back through his foundation, and which he continues to do, which I think is probably more important than any of the other records that uh, he's achieved on the golf course. Yeah, and I, and I think as he ages, you're seeing a, such a different athlete and such a different human being. You know, he's letting down some of the barriers that he used to hold up, and it, it's, uh, it's really nice to see, and I think it's great for the game. Yeah, I mean, giving back is one of the most important trophies that you can have on your mantle, and, you know, through it all, I, I, I think that when we look at Tiger Woods, that probably is one of the most important things uh, to me. That one of the things that stand out. So, Oz, what is your greatest golf memory? I, I I've got to tell you, um, I got to play with Tommy John, and we were playing at the AT and T, you know, and this was back in the eighties, and he was in my group, but not my partner. And it, he and his partner were moving up the leaderboard, and all of a sudden, there was a dramatic change. In, in him and uh, we had lunch afterwards and I said I asked him I said hey I'm on the 14th green I noticed you know and he 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 said something that you said earlier he said to me he goes Jay I, I don't do this you know I, I got to a point where I made myself extremely uncomfortable and he really struggled the uh-huh. rest of the day you know and I said but Tommy you know you're getting professional hitters out and you can't throw 83 miles an hour and he goes, I know, but that's what I do. I'm confident in that. I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Out here, I don't. Mm-hmm. I, tell us, share with us some of the cool golf memories that you have. I know how much you love the game. I know how much you played around the world. Yeah, I got. I had a chance to play AT and T at Pebble Beach, and this was before I become um, as, as decent as I am now. You know, so that was a real challenge. That 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 was always special. You know. Uh, Spyglass uh, Spy Glass is one of my favorite courses to play. I uh, I love playing down in um, in Augusta, and uh, I've had a chance to play Augusta National three times. Um, but there's another course down there called Sage Valley that I love playing. One of my favorite courses, and I've had a chance now to go to Ireland, uh, Scotland, New Zealand, uh, where I've played. So through golf. Uh, after I retired uh, from baseball, 
it is a it has afforded me the opportunity to travel a lot and uh, develop friendships with people that I probably otherwise would not have had the opportunity. So, from a golfing standpoint, being able to just be outside and and experience what it is to um, to be to be down in a match and and being able to come back and you know going to the grind the way you had to do in baseball, you know, you had to bear down all of those things, all those similarities, all they come into play when you, when you play the game, the game of golf. And, um, it's just been, been wonderful. I get a chance to play in um, Lake Tahoe every year. Um, the American century, uh, they don't put the, they don't put us guys on all the time, but, but we're there. I've been there 10, 15 years and I finished 24th out of 90, Six or ninety-seven last year, so wow, I, I'm stuff. moving up. Hopefully, that'll get that'll get a little bit better this year, and I'll get on television a little bit more. Jay, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. You know, when you're on TV, whether it's good or bad, once you're on there, you've earned your, your way up there. You know, you've put yourself in a good posi- good position. Mm-hmm. Well, Ozzy, th- thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Your interest in the game has been just our we have reaped the benefits of that here locally and even around the country. We love having you uh, appreciate you loving the game so much and appreciate you coming on the show. All right, Jay, thank you so much for having me, man. And, uh, you know, anytime that uh, that I can help you out in anything, just let me know. Well, that's going to do it for the Ozzy Smith interview. Uh, man, I, um, the stuff that he did in baseball, Forget it, you know, Cardinal Hall of Famer, uh, MLB Hall of Famer, and now he's he's bringing his efforts and his energies and uh, to the game of golf and raising money and stuff. But I like the fact that you're getting to interview him. And 20 years ago, 30 years ago, did you ever think you'd be in this situation? No, can you believe that? No, that's so. That's going to wrap up the 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 back nine. But don't go anywhere. Pearly and I are going to be back on the 19th hole, and we're just going to talk Ozzy and and talk about that interview and talk about he and his golf and. Things like that. So this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Come on back. The 100,000 watt blowtorch for St. Louis sports. Driven by Auto Centers Nissan. Home of the 30-day return. WXOX and WXOS HD1. East St. Louis. 101 ESPN. For the last 48 years, Pro-Am Golf has been providing outstanding customer service to the greater St. Louis area for all of our golf needs. From top-of-the-line equipment to full-service club repair lessons and instructions. They now have their own retail outlet as well as state-of-the-art computers, cameras, and things to customize all of your personal club fitting needs. Pro-Am Golf carries all the major brands. They also have the latest fashion trends from Puma Golf. Whatever your needs, Pro-Am Golf will meet them and have the best customer service in the industry. Call us at 314-781-7775 or find us at ProAmGolfUSA.com. This is Dan McLaughlin, TV voice of the Cardinals. St. Louis is one of the best sports cities in the country. We also have a tremendous history of supporting professional golf. We're excited to bring golf back to St. Louis with the inaugural Ascension Charity Classic, September 28th through October 4th at Norwood Hills Country Club. Don't miss your chance to see PGA Tour champion legends. Proceeds will benefit St. Louis area youth, including the Urban League, Mary Grove, the Boys and Girls Club, and more. For tickets and sponsors, information head to ascensioncharityclassic.com let me tell you about a strength training program that helped me and it can improve your golf game and overall fitness as well and all it takes is 20 minutes once a week 20 minutes to fitness targets the muscle groups used in golf because you work with a trainer on physical therapy equipment it also reduces the chance of exercise related injuries to almost zero but don't take my word for it try it yourself your first session is absolutely free 20 Minutes to Fitness is in Clayton and Chesterfield. To learn more, visit 20MinutesToFitness.com. 20 Minutes to Fitness. It works for me. USA Mortgage is doing it again. Joe Schieser and his staff have lowered rates again this month, and they will waive closing costs. If you want to refinance to get cash out, lower your rate, shorten your term, or eliminate that costly, unnecessary mortgage insurance. If you are purchasing a property, they can issue a pre-approval letter within minutes. They are the largest mortgage company in the state of Missouri, and their volume allows them to quote the lowest rates. Don't waste your time with the national online brokers. USA Mortgage is employee-owned and operated right here in St. Louis. USA Mortgage has closed over $500 million in loans in nearly 30 years in the business and over $2 million alone to Delsing's. 
I want to thank Donahue Painting and Refinishing for supporting the show. When I was out playing golf, in my mind, I would see a picture that I wanted, and I'd try to hit the shot the way it was painted in my mind. The way you see your home is what Donahue Painting and Refinishing can make your home look like. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by the Metropolitan Amateur Golf Association. Welcome back. It's golf with Jay Delsing. You ever had a cold one on the 19th hole there, Pearly? What 19th hole? Yeah. 19th holes. Absolutely. I always want to have a cold one on the 19th hole. I mean, that's that's the, that's the why we're playing golf, to be able to sit down and talk about it yeah. and tell some stories yeah. and plan the next time we get to go play. Well, let's talk. Let's tell some stories. Let's talk about okay. Ozzie Smith. I mean, one of the things you said at the break that's so cool and so true, you know, I'm a ridiculous baseball fan. I love the the game and always have first true love in my whole life. And for me to get the interview Ozzy was just really kind of cool. And I hope folks you you bear with that interview a little because I, I I mean I just you know got kind of stumbling all over myself. But twenty five years ago or thirty years ago would you said I got the interview Ozzy Smith for a golf show, we'd be like, what? Yeah, so cool. Yeah. Absolutely so cool. So, I, I I just loved what he so many things that he referenced though, but it's kind of all the reasons why you said you wanted to have this show. You know, part of it is how important it is in his life now, meaning golf. How it helped him with the transition of co- being competitive, being in a, an arena where he could compete uh, in, in baseball. And then, you know, what's he going to do with his time and his energy and his competitive spirit uh, afterwards? Absolutely. And then some of the other things he can do in the community, again, because of golf. Just all the all the things golf help with, transition, et cetera, he kind of encapsulates most of it. Well, he does. And, I mean, think about that compared – think about our game compared to – Baseball, mm-hmm. you know, so you can stay in the game in baseball. But there's this social aspect, John, about golf, where you mix it with business, where you mix it with charity, whether you mix it with competition, whatever. It just transcends these other games that way, because and I'm not saying it's a better game than baseball, a better it's game different. than hockey. It's different, but. You're play- he's playing it when he's 65. Well, and and then he can bring the different sports and different people together. I right. mean, that's a huge fun part of it. Well, so who? we've seen that with you and him, for right. example. And you said you haven't played with him, but you've played in events around yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and those types of things. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we know what see his house when we play one of the favorite golf courses around here, which is a lot of fun. That's the other thing that struck me. You guys talk quite a bit about that. Here's a guy that could go live anywhere he wants, literally in the world. At a very high fun level, and he's decided to be in St. Louis. I told, I said that in, I said that in the interview. I said, "Do you ever think a kid growing up in Compton? You and I know what Compton's mm-hmm. like, especially back then. Growing up in Compton, would ever think, man, I'm gonna, go, I, I'm gonna go live the rest of my life in St. Louis?" And he was like, "Man, if you'd have told me that, you know, no chance." But in it hell. speaks a lot to this to the city, which you're always promoting and 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 pumping up because here's a guy that got to see the best of cities all over the country for many, many years and would have been welcomed anywhere. Uh, and and to, to choose here, I just think it's neat. And I guess technically, right, he didn't finish his career here. Do I have that? Right? No, he did. He oh, finished yeah, okay. his career. Thought, he okay. didn't start it here. He started in San Diego. But That's where I got it wrong. The way he started was fascinating. And just, a, you know, back in the day, you know, here's a, well, I don't know what he said, 150 pounds or something, you know, shortstop that was um, that didn't hit very well, but but played defense at a, an entirely different level. And um, I, I I asked him in that interview, I said, man, you know, 2,500 hits us, that's a magnificent accomplishment, especially considering, you know, when you started out, they were thinking they might run you out of here mm-hmm. because you're not going to be able to hit at all. And he turned himself into. I love it. It's kind a of a, ro- a rocky player. story when he said he was in his basement, uh, and, and, uh, in, yep. in some kind of an in-house batting cage of some sort that he built for himself. Right. I just think it's uh, interesting. I think he did the same thing with his golf. So it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know, he's, it. he's tenacious you, uh, it, to, to get that part of it down, get the fundamentals down. And like so many of the other great athletes that we've had on the show, John, they talk about how golf fills mm-hmm. that uh, competitive Jones for them. Yeah, and and it stays. I'm sure helps them stay co- uh, connected with their their buddies, so they can play in all the different events, uh, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I just I just think it's great. How cool is it for 
an inner city kid to go, I'm going to go learn something, anything from Ozzie Smith. I mean, it's one thing if if I go there and try to, you know, help some kids or something, but they're like, Ozzie Smith? Come on, man. Let yeah. me in. Yeah. This guy, I mean, even though he's long retired now, he's still iconic in the city. Absolutely. I'm sure will be for a very long time uh, iconic in the game. Yeah. How many other guys ran out there and flipped? I, <laughs> Seriously, was there anybody else? I, I don't remember. No, any. I'm not, not a baseball fan knowledge. like you are. I yeah, certainly I watch it. I followed Cubs, and it's a, lot, it's, it's a good sport and that kind of Me, stuff. Me, cut the mic. <laughs> We had a Cubs reference on this show. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I snuck that in there with you not noticing. Um, I've never seen anybody, you know, and um, that's – it's it's almost like he was some sort of elite dancer that played baseball. Mm. I mean, the way that he the, – the way that he ran, the range that he showed, and that some of the places – some I'll never forget the one – pop fly out into short left with Vince Coleman, who could also fly. These guys are sprinting at one another, and Ozzy somehow is running away from home plate, just swipes his glove out there, makes his catch, and then does this sort of like some sort of weird divey's thing to miss Vince Coleman coming in like a freight train. I, I, it was I, awesome. I like the, some of the stories, too, and you hear it, I think, from really anybody that's had any success, is how instant it was. You know, everybody thinks that it happened oh, overnight, and it wasn't. And and what was it, Eddie Murray, that he got uh, kind of bypassed as far as nobody's paying attention to him because Eddie was uh, taking all the yeah, attention. Yeah, all, all, all the scouts and all mm. the uh, all the whoever anybody was in baseball were were, were watching Eddie play, and there was another Hall of Famer. I mean, right. so well, you know, what are the odds of that? But it's just kind of interesting to hear the stories, and you could tell he, he spoke fondly of them too. It wasn't you know looking back and, and negative stuff. He was he was just out there and he was uh, coming up through the ranks just like anybody else and that's where you're you're, you're made to be who you're ever going to be. Yeah, you know, the thing that the thing that I love is that he um, the stuff he's doing with PGA Reach. You know, we talked about when I was involved with the first tee and and when the PGA Championship was here, John mm. Ozzy was one of the chairs of the whole thing. Mm. I think he was like honorary chair or something. You know, that's how much he um, loved the game and loved getting, you know, put up right at the front. And, and sure. uh, I mean, how, I mean, we talked a little bit about Tiger in that interview. And uh, one of the things, and uh, and I know, I think we were off the air when Ozzy and I talked about this, but one of the things that is still so cool about Tiger, for an, for an African-American kid who grew up in a really poor area like Ozzy did, to have, to have someone like Tiger Woods burst on the scene and he's involved in this, you know, it's more than a hobby for Ozzy, but there's what how, how Ozzy's involved in the game now. And to open all of these doors that should have been opened years ago, I mean, how cool is that? Because I'm sure those guys, Pearl, saw stuff racially, segregation-wise, all that stuff-wise, that they would have been like, who from Compton is ever going to be playing golf? Yeah, yeah. Yep, great stories, great stories across the board. Yeah, now he gets to go hang out at some of the best places in the world, and he's got a he's got a a, a great game to go with it, and uh, and he's committed too, man. He talks, and you, when he talks, you can tell he's so in to this game and wanting to learn. And he started. We were uh, again off the air, and he said, "You know, man, my short game. I'm like, oh, that's I might be able to help you there. That's kind of what I hope I you do. I hope you do. On. I hope yeah. it's something. We're gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna." Text each other and go tee it once in a while. Well, actually, one of his group more. was going to help you physically with something and uh, let them help you there and get uh, Ozzy, yeah. teach him how to use that bounce that'll change oh, his world. It'll and, change uh, his he, world. Absolutely. Some of the guys are depending on him missing those chips, and he starts hitting it, uh, using his bounce, and he doesn't miss the chips anymore. He's going to love that. It's not going to be so fun for those guys. <laughs> Ozzy's going to have some of their no, cash. No, it will not. No, it will not. Well, that's going to wrap up the. Man, that's the 19th hole. We got to sign off. We got to sign off. Sign off. I want to thank uh, Donahue Painting and Refinishing for supporting the show. I want you guys to look out on my YouTube channel for what I call the Delsing Report. I'm going to have some equipment, uh, all sorts of different equipment, clothes, shoes, lasers, the latest stuff. Uh, I'm going to check all that stuff out and tell you what I think about it. Um, so that'll be the Delsing Report. Well, Pearl, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for doing the show. Meet, thanks for working the board and keeping us on time somewhat, sort of, kind of. 
And this is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis. That was Golf with Jay Delsing, brought to you by Whitmore Country Club. Tune in next Sunday for more from Jay, John, and the other pros and experts from the golf world. In the meantime, you can find all of Jay's shows at 101ESPN.com as well as at jdelsinggolf.com.